Yes, good morning to you, Jonathan. Jonathan, I'm going to quote morning, one of Jane. your spies. Dieter Gerhardt seems to be one of our most successful. He spied for South Africa or on South Africa for several decades. And he said, when you asked him about information about himself, he said, the whole thing with spying is that you've got to look at what's in front of you, what's actually there. What did he teach you about the world of spying? Um, well, when I met with Dieter, which is, uh, you know, very briefly, because he, he's quite an enigmatic character, he spied for Russia for 20 years um, and was eventually unmasked in 1983. Um, he taught me that information is there, you just got to know how to find it, because he didn't want to speak to me. Um, he said the whole point of espionage is that it's secret. Um, so he taught me that if you want to find information, you have to look for it and just know how to look for it. So you had to so spy on the spies? So I spent two years stalking all these spies. Yeah. <laughs> I spied on the spies and social media made it quite easy, yeah. <laughs> and, and what, I mean, the, the fact that all the spies here are white, I mean, what does it tell you about what was happening during that time? Well, I, you know, I, I specifically chose uh, um, white spies, people who had already been unmasked. Um, as we see that the court case that's about to start, uh, uh, where our former president accused uh, Derek Hanukkah of being an, a known enemy agent, um, it's easy to make those those allegations, but it's more difficult to to back them up. And if and I do have a, a, a chapter on on Roland Hunter, who was a, a, a spy, an a accidental spy. He spied for the ANC. And if you read that chapter, you'll see that Derek Hanukkah was in fact an anti-apartheid um, activist, and he went to jail for his anti-apartheid activity. And he was in a sense kind of you know, helping Roland Hunter getting very valuable information out uh, to the ANC. R Roland happened to be in, in, you know, a conscript who uh, <coughs> was, uh, sent to military intelligence to do his national service, and he found himself in a position where he he had access to information that the South African Defence Force was destabilizing destabilizing the frontline states, and he felt it was his duty to get this information out. Um, yeah. <coughs> yes, I mean, and obviously you had more, uh, as you say, sort of p more personnel to work with, with the spies that you found. I mean, it says a lot about South Africa's history. Your book, <coughs> excuse me, I'm having trouble with my voice, and 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 the fear of the Khurat Khafar. That's right. You know, so so I, I, I look at spies from the 1950s all the way through to 1990. So all sorts of people who spied, and I tried to, un to, to sort of grapple with their motives. And I, I, in, in the end, I think it's a multiple reasons why people choose to become spies, why they become spies. Some are manipulated, but the people that I chose all took that decision to, to, you know, the, the, to, to, to become a spy. And I guess it's the fact that they convince themselves that they're not traitors, that this is possibly a higher calling. Well, I, th I think it, it, it depends on the individual. Uh, yes, I, I, I don't think any of the spies, well, actually, maybe that's not true. Uh, most of the spies didn't think that they were doing anything wrong. Um, two of the spies that I did interview, re uh, 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 well, um, one of the spies that I interviewed really grappled with, with what she had done. She had infiltrated the Black Sash in the 80s, uh, Joy Harden, and it got quite close to a number of activists. Um, and, and, you know, 30 years later, she's tormented by, by what she did. Another of the spies is Mark Baer, uh, who ha has subsequently died. But um, I read a lot of, of, of what he had written, and I spoke to friends of his who, who didn't know he was spying at the time, and also the sense of anguish about what he had done and the people he betrayed, I felt quite strongly. But for the rest, Olivia Forsyth, uh, Gordon Brookbanks, Craig Williamson, uh, Vanessa Brereton, I don't believe that they really think that they did very, anything very wrong. Yeah, Jer uh, Jennifer Miles, who basically slept her way through 
the enemy to get what it was that she needed. How did, uh, was there a common trait going through all of them? I mean, how could they look into the eyes of their families, for example, and how could they sleep at night? Yeah, I mean, looking at spy psychology, I think a lot of these spies, um, you know, one, one of the, the qualities, you know, or, or you know, uh, uh, that, that a spy needs is to be able to compartmentalize. And I think that's what they did. I, th I think they were able to do what they did by, pre by being good actors, by pretending um, and infiltrating. But I think they, ha they, they have an ability to compartmentalize. Um, and it's a, I suppose it's a psychological buffer. Um, um, and also, a lot of them believe that they were just passing on information and that the information they were passing on was relatively harmless. Um, however, the, you know, the, 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 the apartheid government had an, um, a department that was analyzing the information and was trying to build a big picture of, of what they were being told. So the information that they were giving led to some serious consequences for people. So, you know, the spying was never harmless. It was serious. Mm, I mean, they called it treason, didn't they? Jonathan, really enjoyed reading your book. Thank you very much for giving us an insight into South African spies and how they work.